قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من المؤمنين رجال صدقوا ما عاهدوا الله عليه فمنهم من قضى نحبه ومنه من ينتظر وما بدلوا تبديلا صدق الله العلي العظيم Among the faithful are men who fulfill what they have pledged to Allah Of them are some who have fulfilled the pledge and of them are some who still wait and they have not changed in the least. Affinity. Affinity is a natural or inherent liking to someone or something. That there are certain things that we love instinctually. For example, we have a love of life, a love of survival. These are all instinctual loves. We have a love of eating, for example, because this maintains our survivability. We have a love of, of drinking. We have a love of material possessions. However, the affinity that I'm speaking of is something that's deeper than this, something that has been infused into the hearts of the believers. That there's a degree of love, and in fact, this love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, alayhim, is something that has been placed into the hearts of the believers by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places certain degrees of love into the hearts of the believers. For example, an example of this affinity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places is like the love a mother has towards her child. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places, the, the, He infuses this Love, he installs this love into the being of the mother, the very being of her. Why? We notice that due to this love, and this is an example that, that I mention commonly, but because it is such a phenomenon and common occurrence that we see in, in, in our lives, that through this love that the mother has to the child, she no longer worries about her well being and only worries about the well being of the child. Even though this baby that has been born is a being that has almost taken the life of the mother and yet the mother still has this immense love. This love that the mother has for the child is something that has been infused by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in fact, we have a tradition that says Inna al-arwah junudun mujannada that the souls are like soldiers. فَمَا تَعَارِفْ مِنْهَا فِي الْمِيثَاقِ this is a, a tradition of Amir al-Mu'mineen He says that the souls are like soldiers The hearts of the believers or the souls of the believers are, Of the people are like soldiers That in the time of the Mithaq, the covenant That before we came to this world In the ether world there was a time where we gave a covenant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of this in the Holy Quran. He says, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمْ مِنْ ذُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَتِهِمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ And so, before He created us onto this earth, He had taken the lineage of the children of Adam in whatever form we were, whatever form that was, but we were tested. That He said, Am I not your Lord? And we said, Yes, we agree. Indeed, you are our Lord. And so Amir al-Mu'mineen says that these hearts during that period, if you got along with somebody, then in this world you will get along with them. And if you hated somebody, then in this world you will hate them. You notice that sometimes when you meet somebody, you meet a person, and from upon meeting them, you know, you just have that feeling. It's like, you're, like a shudder from your body. Your heart says that I won't get along with this individual. Or sometimes you meet an individual and your heart opens up to them. You just, your heart feels good about this person and it opens up to them and, and you become friends with them, for example. That Amir al-Mu'mineen says this is because back in the time when we took the mithaq, when we took the covenant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is how our souls interacted from then and this is the result of it. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us certain affinities to other things. For example, of the senses that we have. That we have an affinity to, to smell, to beautiful smells, to beautiful scents. That we love a beautiful scent. 
And this is something that's inherent within us. This is something that's almost instinctual. And so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has ordained that the believers should smell good. In fact, he says that you should spend much of your wealth on smelling good. Why? Ultimately, this is a selfless act. For somebody to smell good is a selfless act. Because generally, once you put a perfume on yourself, you get acclimatized to that perfume. You get uh, used to it. And so therefore, you can't smell it anymore. But who smells it? It's the people that are around you. So when you go and meet and see people, it gives them a comforting feeling if you smell good, for example. And so we see that these are of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a certain affinity to. In fact, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took this covenant from us and He said, Am I not your Lord? He also, sh he also showed us His awliya. That He says, These are my awliya. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. That do you accept them to be your masters and leaders in this world and some accepted and some refused. We have a tradition of a middle mu'minin which is quite strange where there is people because in the day of uh, in the day of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to say that a middle mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib is qasim al jannati wa nar that he is the criteria or the distinction between heaven and hell. And so one day they ask, al Ma'moon asks Imam al Rada. He says to him, What is with this tradition? What do you people say about this tradition? So Imam al Rada says that Amir al Mu'mineen, back in the time of Rasulullah, people would bring their children. Because the Prophet said that whoever as a child loves this man will be of the people of heaven. And whoever as a child hates this man will be of the people of hell. That instinctually, inherently his soul already has a, an, an affinity with Amir al-Mu'mineen or either it doesn't. So when Imam al-Rida leaves, salam alayhi, leaves the court of al-Ma'moon, one of the companions comes up and says, Sayyidi or Mawlai, this is not what you have told us previously. So he says to him, this is the answer for Ma'moon. Because with an answer like this, I save the blood of other believers. But the real answer is on the day of judgment, and this is obviously both answers are correct, but on the day of judgment, Amir al-Mu'mineen will say to the fire of hell, you take these people and the others are with me. So Amir al-Mu'mineen says to these people at the mosque of his companions, they were asking him and saying, for example, I love you Amir al-Mu'mineen, Amir al-Mu'mineen will say yes and I also have this feeling towards you. And then one man comes up and he says, I'm going to make... Amir al-Mu'mineen into a liar. So he comes up and he says to him, and this is someone that hates Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen inni ahabbuk. He goes, I love you. And Amir al-Mu'mineen says to him, Kadibt. And then the man says to him, Subhanallah. Ka'annaka ta'raf ma fi qalbi. Qala aliyan alayhi salam, inna allaha khalaqa. Al-arwaah qabla al-abdan bi al-fay'aam. Thumma aradahuma alayna. فَأَيْنَ كُنْتُمْ لَمْ أَرَاكْ So Amir al-Mu'mineen says to him that before he created mankind, before, thousands of years before, he created you and he took a covenant from you. And he took your allegiance to us. And when you said that you love me, I saw that you weren't there at that time. That you weren't in that time. Where were you? I didn't see you. And so for, therefore this person who was lying and claiming that he loved Amir al-Mu'mineen, was actually uh, lying about his true feelings, but Amir al-Mu'mineen knew his true, true feelings because he knew what was within the heart. We have traditions that say, Inna shi'atuna khuliqat min shu'a'i anwarina wa baqiyata tinatina. So he, the Imam says that our shi'a were created from the remnants of our rays of light and from the remnants of our clay or what it was that we were created from that within the hearts of the believers and the hearts of the Shia we have a tradition that says there is a grave for Imam al Hussein in every heart of every Shia that in every heart of every Shia there is a burning ember for Imam al Hussein that inflames on the tenth that from our hearts we have this feeling and this love this affinity towards the Ahlul Bayt and specifically towards Imam al Hussein 
when Nabi Adam salam was created and he made his error, his tarq al-awla. We don't take it as a sin for various reasons. Of the reasons was, uh, were obviously that we call it tarq al-awla. The second reason is the fact that it was before he, had, he was still in the heavens. He hadn't come down to the earth. Therefore, the shara of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's on the earth is not like what is in paradise. However, he learned some words from Jibra'il to seek forgiveness. And so with these words, Jibra'il taught him to say, to ask Allah's forgiveness by the, by, by the right of Muhammad, wa Ali, wa Fatima, wa Hassan, wa Hussein. Salam alaikum wa So Nabi Adam says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to Jibra'il, uh, after Allah has forgiven him, he says, this is excellent, that you have taught, taught me the names of these five, these chosen, the ones who will come at the end of time, the, holy, the last prophet of our time. And when I heard the name of the holy prophet, I was happy. And I heard the name of Fatima al-Zahra, I was happy. And I heard the name of Imam al-Hassan, I was happy. But why when I hear the name of Imam al Hussein, my heart shudders and I become sad. So he's told by Jibra'il that this Hussein, say the shuhada, will make such a great sacrifice that even before his creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this ceremony of mourning, this ember in the hearts, this grave in the hearts of the believers for this personality. So we see that our allegiance to the Imams was taken long before. Our allegiance to Imam al-Hussein was taken long before. This love of the Imam is the highest level of faith. This love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the highest level of faith. Now the thing is, for the believers that are here, the brothers and sisters, truly you are blessed and truly you are lucky that you are of the people who join in the commemoration and the remembrance of the martyrdom of, of say the shuhada of Abdullah. In fact, there is a tradition of Rasulullah where he is sitting with his companions. And his companions are sitting with him and they're speaking and he says to them, Rasulullah says, Ya laytani laqaytu bi ikhwani aw alhaqtu ikhwani I wish that I have met my brothers or have the ability to meet my brothers. And then they say to him, Ya Rasulullah, are we not your brothers? We're sitting among you. He says, no. He says it again. Ya laytani laqaytu ikhwani And then they say to him, Ya Rasulullah, is it not us that we are your sahaba? that are sitting among you, he says, no, my brothers, he says, are ones that will come at the end of time. And these ones will believe in black on white. They won't see me. They won't see my Ahlul Bayt, that, but, but they will believe with, with ink on paper. And he says it again, Ya laytani, lahaqtu bi ikhwan. I wish I get to meet or follow my brethren. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is speaking about you. Today, the people that come and commemorate, the people that follow in the path of Imam al-Hussein, the people that have this love, this mahabba, this mawadda, which is shown through our tears and uh, our mourning ceremonies for Imam al-Hussein, that Rasulullah sends his blessing and counts you as his brothers. He speaks to you as if you are his brethren. That this love in faith is so important. We have traditions that say, الحب في الله فريضة والبغض في الله فريضة. We have a tradition that speaks about this love in faith, and the reason I mentioned the verse at the beginning, the importance of this verse, the one where من المؤمنين that of the believers رجال صدق ما عاهد الله عليه that of the believers there is men who were honest with their promise to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. The ones who reach that the peak of that honesty to the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the ones who reach the level of love of Allah and love of the Ahlul Bayt. We're talking about true love as in mawadda. This mawadda which comes from mahabba that you have love towards them but this love evolves into action. That for you to reach this true level of love and action this is the essence of faith. This is the core element of faith. This is everything that the faith has to hold. And the ones who show their love for Ahlul Bayt through their actions and their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they gain 
solidarity with the Ahlul Bayt. They solidify and authenticate and validate their faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these actions, through the love for Ahlul Bayt. There's a tradition of Nabi Musa alayhi salam. Rasulullah says that Nabi Musa once spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of his discussions with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says to him, have you ever done an action for me? Hal amiltu amalan li? Have you done a single action for me? So Nabi Musa says, oh Allah, you've told me to pray so I've prayed and I've fasted and I've paid zakat and I've done dhikr. These are all the things that I've done for you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, Amma salat fahuwa burhan. As for the prayers, this is a proof for you. And as for the fasting, huwa jannah. It is safety from the fire of hell. And as for the zakat, it is dhul. It is a shade for you on the day of judgment. That all of these things you're doing for you, your prayers are a proof for you. Your, your uh, fasting is safety from the fire of hell. When you pay zakat, you are buying shade for yourself on the day of judgment. He says, when you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is nur. So Nabi Musa says, then what are the actions that are solely for you? He says to him, Have you taken a friend or guardian for me only? Or taken someone as an enemy for me only? For then Musa knew that Ahabbul A'mal ila Allah, the best and most beloved actions towards Allah. A love for Allah and hate for Allah. These are the things, these actions that come solely and purely from the heart that are only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests His uh, servants and some of His servants, they wait for the test. Why? Because they have this belief and they have, belief and they have made this covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they want to prove themselves through this test. One of the stories that we hear about of the believers that, that attempt to test themselves because obviously belief is stages but a better word than stages is, is colors that stages are numbered but colors are in hues and shades and there is billions of colors especially for the people that are in graphic design they understand the degrees and differences between a hue and a shade of a color this is how belief is belief comes in stages and when you complete when you have completed your faith this is when you have dyed your heart in the color of faith you become you become dyed into that color for, for, for lack of use of a better word you have that your heart becomes dyed your person becomes dyed in that color of faith that everything that you do has the faith behind it and this faith always needs proof when they ask for example Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they say to him, the verse in the Holy Quran, لو أنزل عليه القرآن جملة واحدة. They say, why did not this Quran come down as one hit? Why don't you just come and tell us this is the whole Quran? And Allah subhanahu wa taala replies by saying, وكذلك لنثبت به فؤادك ورتلناه ترتيب. That for us to establish it within your heart. The hearts of the believers, even the heart of Rasulullah, that we brought it down within stages. So in other words, there has to be a proof behind it. No one, for example, will take a validation or a certification of you without some sort of proof behind it. There needs to be some sort of verification, authentication of action to prove that this is who you are and this is what you do. When you make that covenant with Allah, this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, of the believers, min al mu'minin, of the believers that have taken this covenant that some of them minhum man qada nahba means that some of them have died in other words they have fulfilled that they have died in the path of Allah Imam al Hussein would consistently say this verse when he saw his companions go out into the battlefield that of them have fulfilled this vow and of them are awaiting but they have not changed that within their hearts they still remain to have that degree of faith it is said that when Pharaoh, and we know about Pharaoh, and we have read about Pharaoh and heard about him, this Pharaoh at the time of Moses, this Pharaoh who was such a vile man that used to say to the people that I am God, I am God Almighty, that I am God and I am your uh, Creator, I am your Master, that you must follow me and obey me. 
And so among his people were some believers at the time of Nabi Musa. Among his people were some believers. Of the believers was his wife, Asiya Amrat Faraun, who is one of the greatest women in history. And she believed in uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the God of Moses. So she believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When she believed, he says to her, how dare you believe, like he said to his servants, how dare you believe before I give you permission, I'm your God, not the God of Moses. How dare you believe before I give you permission? And so of the people that believed with her was either one of her daughters or her cousin, another lady in her family. So he began to punish them. He laid his wife out and he began to punish her in a way, either with a spear or either by, by rolling a massive rock over her, something like that. They, he, he began to torture his wife and as she was dying, she maintained belief. Now, as she was being harmed and tortured, she saw another person of her family who was placed in a boiling pot, in, uh, sorry, in an oven and burnt alive. As she's watching this moment, she smiles, she laughs. So Pharaoh says she must be in delirium. And she says to him, no, I'm not in delirium, but I have just seen the angels take her soul and take it up to paradise before you even got to torture her. Before she felt much pain, she was taken immediately up to paradise. So upon seeing this, Nabi Musa hears or he sees this torture going on. So he prays to Allah. He says, oh Allah, make it a little bit easier for her. Rather than say, have mercy on her and kill her completely. He says, no, make it a little bit easier on her. And so she continues to get tortured. And then she says, she prays to Allah when she sees this, the soul of this woman get dragged up to paradise. She says, Rabbi, abni li andaka. Baitan fil Jannah, that she says, Oh Allah, build for me a house in paradise. And then she dies. So they ask Nabi Musa that why didn't you just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make her death easy, have mercy on her and take her soul immediately. And Nabi Musa says, because she needed to prove her faith. She needed to gain that rank. Her proof was from this pain that she went through that hardship, therefore she attained such a degree, such a level. She attained a special place, a certain place. When we see the story of, of Nabi Yahya and Nabi Zakaria, without going through the complete details, but it was when Nabi Zakaria heard about Imam al Hussein. This is the, tra the tradition. And we notice that there's always a comparison between Nabi Yahya and Imam al Hussein. When he heard about him, that he heard the names, he learned the names of the Ahlul Bayt, he heard the name of Hussein, his heart fluttered. And he began to cry. And then he says, tell me. He says to the angel, tell me about Imam al-Hussein. So he tells him at the end of time, this is what will happen. And the people will call upon to Imam al-Hussein to come and save them and help them. And he will come attending to their call. And then when he comes near them, they will no longer require his help. Nay, they will murder him and slaughter him in this way. Thirsty. And leave his body and trample his body. This is what will happen. So he begins to cry. Nabi Zakaria cries so much. And then he says, oh Allah... I want to assimilate with this prophet. I want to empathize with this prophet, the final prophet of your time. Give me a son that will be killed like Imam al Hussein. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants him Yahya. And Yahya ibn Zakariya, his head was given as, to, as, the, dowry, as the dowry of a licentious woman, uh, to, uh, as the dowry to a licentious woman. She demanded his head because she wanted to marry her uncle. And Nabi Zakaria told him, this is, uh, Nabi Yahya said, this is wrong, you can't do this. So she said, I refuse to do this unless you bring me his head as a dowry. And this is what happened to the head of Nabi Zakaria. And this is why Imam al Hussein uses it as an example. He says, how low is the world in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows the head of Nabi Yahya to be gifted as the dowry of a licentious woman. That this is the value and the worth of this world, nothing. It's just a testing ground. But these people who went in that path and they showed their faith and they tested their faith. How can I relate to these people, to these anbiya, to these high holy people and to the companions of Imam al Hussein? How can I relate to these people and become like these people? How do I show my love for Imam al Hussein? By coming to the Majalis al Dhikr is one. By crying over Imam al Hussein is another. By joining in the Sha'ar of Imam al Hussein, like beating the chest. However, is it a proper way for me, for example, to get the name of Imam al Hussein written on my body? Is this a way to show my love and, and 
tathbeet of, Imam al of my love to Imam al-Husayn. Obviously, this is not something that, that shows you or proves your love to Imam al-Husayn. To prove my love to Imam al-Husayn is not about me trying to act courageous. Believe me, the most courageous ones in Karbala were ulama. They were fuqaha. They weren't staunch. They weren't people that used to walk around staunching everyone. No, they didn't stare anyone down. These were people of strong faith. That the majority of them were killed or wounded while they were praying. You want to prove your love to Imam al-Husayn? Prove your love by praying on time, for example. Prove your love by being sincere and honest. Prove your love to Imam al-Husayn by treating the people around you in the manner that Imam al-Husayn would have treated the people around him. Of the companions of Imam al-Husayn was Bishr al-Hadram. And Bishr, this great companion of Imam al Hussein, the second he heard about Imam al Hussein, he, he went to him. Now, Bishr was someone who was a companion of Amir al Mu'mineen beforehand. And Bishr had sons who had died in the Battle of Safi. Now, he was someone that went towards Imam al Hussein when he heard that Imam al Hussein had left Mecca. And he caught up with Imam al Hussein by the time it was the night of Ashura. And Imam al Hussein said on that night, وَهَذَا اللَّيْلِ قَدْ غَشِيَكُمْ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ جَمَلًا وَلْيَأْخُذْ كُلُّ رَجُلٍ مِّنْكُمْ بِيَدِي رَجُلٍ مِّنْ أَهْلِ بَيْتِي وَتَفَرَّقُوا فِي سَوَادِ هَذَا اللَّيْلِ وَضَرُونِي وَهَاؤُلَاءِ الْقَوْمِ فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يُرِيدُونَ غَيْرِي That Imam al Hussein says to them, the night has enveloped us, it has overcome us. Take it as a place of hiding. Each man, take the hand of a man from somebody, from their people and leave. Because they only want me, they don't want you. Look at the mercy of the Imam. That these people, if they want to prove their faith, let them prove their faith. But if they don't want to prove their faith, then this is the chance for you to leave. Flee. This Bishr, a man came from Kufa, and he came with a message for Bishr. He says, oh Bishr, your son has been taken prisoner in Kufa. And your wife and your other son, they need to get him out. They need you to come back to Kufa. So Bishr says to the messenger, don't tell Imam al Hussein this. I don't want the Imam to know. Because I love the Imam and I know the Imam reciprocates the love. I know the Imam, if he hears of my son, he will order me to go back to Kufa. And so he, sa he says, don't let the Imam know. And then the Imam finds out. So the Imam says to him, he says to him that your son is in need, that I order you to leave and to go back to Kufa. So Bushar gets extremely upset. That how can I leave? He says to him, Oh, Sayyidi wa Mawlai, that if I leave the whole time in the Kufa, I will be thinking about you and your family and what has happened to them. I can't leave. What is my son to me after you? What is my life after you? They're reminiscent of the words of Burair. When Burair says to him after this speech, and Burair was the first of the companions to get up and talk, he says, Sama'na ya ibn Rasulullah maqalata. Walau kanat dunya lana baqiya. وكنا فيها مخلدين لا أثرنا النهض نهض معك على الإقامة فيها. That if we knew that this world was eternal forever, and we will be in it forever if we leave you, then we would rather die in your path than leave you and live forever. That notice that the, the degree of love for the Imam is beyond Jannah Nahr. It's beyond thinking about paradise or the fire of hell. That these people have come with a plan. They have come with a covenant they have made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have come with a covenant they have made with Imam al Hussein, and they refuse to leave until they fulfill this covenant, be it through martyrdom or, 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 or either way. So Al-Bishr says to him, La wallah, la af'ala dhalik. He says to the Imam, by Allah, I will not leave. Akalatni sibaa hayyan in faraktuk. He says, may the animals eat me alive if I leave you. That I will never leave your side, he says to the Imam. Now the Imam hears this of him and he says to him that remain, uh, you, I will give you permission because he realizes that within his heart that he has this depth of love for Imam al Hussein, and this is what he wants to do. So the Imam was testing him. He gave him the chance to leave, but he understood that this person wanted to prove his love and his loyalty to Imam al Hussein. The other great companion... 
of Imam al Hussein is Abbas ibn Abbas ibn Shabib al Shakiri. That Abbas, this great companion of Imam al Hussein, the thing is, we speak about the companions first in the, in the coming nights, and I'd like to talk about as many of them as I can before we get to the family of Imam al Hussein. But Abbas was known as the bravest of the Arabs, and his tribe, the tribe of the Shakiris, these people were companions of Amir al Mu'mineen and they fought by his side in Safin. In fact, it has been said about them that, if he, 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 that they said that if Amir al Mu'mineen had 1,000 soldiers from the tribe of Shakiri, then he would have purged the earth of all of the unbelievers and everyone on the earth would have been a believer. This is the degree, this is what sort of warriors they were. They used to be known as Fatayan al Shams, the youth of the sun, the tribe of Shakiri. Why? They were the refuge for whoever did not have a refuge. That they used to protect and cover and their light would reach all, rich and poor. And whoever needed help, they would be there for these people that needed help. Now, Al-Abbas was somebody who would pray uh, on time. He would pray throughout the night and then he would sleep a bit and then he would wake up again and pray the night prayer. Somebody who was a lecturer. Somebody who was a alim, he was a faqih, he, would, he was someone who would teach the people. It was him and his great companion Shawdab. These two, Abbas and Shawdab, were such great brothers. And you know, sometimes a, a, a close friend is better than a brother. That a close friend sometimes treats you better than a brother. These two, this is how they were. They were like these close, close friends and close brothers. And so, on the day of Ashura, when the water had been cut off, it had been cut off for three days. They had already been in a little bit of combat. People are dying. Abbas was bleeding. So already death is before his eyes. And him and his friend Shaldab sit down and they have a conversation. And he says to his friend Shaldab, what do you intend to do? What is it that you intend to do now? He says, of course I intend to go out and fight. So he says to him, oh no, no this Shaldab, that today is a day of reward. That today we need to get the most reward that we can get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and show ourselves in front of Imam al Hussein and prove our, our faith and our sincerity in front of the Imam. So these people, even during this time of difficulty, what are they thinking about? It shows you that these people were completely dyed with the color of faith. That they had the complete color of faith within their hearts. Because what are they talking about today when people are dying, when people are fleeing, when people are getting cut up and they're bleeding and he's speaking about what will give me the more reward. He says, oh Shawdab, you, I want you to go. In fact, in some traditions they say Shawdab is greater than Abbas, even though, uh, Abbas, Afwan, Abbas, even though we never speak about him. And they say that Al-Abbas says to him, I want you to go before me into battle so I can see you be martyred before me and my heart can get enraged more. And I can get more reward because I can feel what Imam al Hussein has felt. That Imam al Hussein loves his companions. He loves his family. The Imams love us. Imam al Hujjah al Farj al Sharif loves you. Do you know when you raise your hands to do dua to Imam al Hujjah, he raises his hands and does dua for you? We know the story that if I can just pass it by in the, in the Masjid al Kufa, when there is a man that is ill and he sees uh, Amir al Mu'mineen sees him as ill, and then Amir al Mu'mineen says to him, that I am also ill. And the man says, the, so the virus has been getting around, the disease has been getting around, and the middle Mu'mineen says, no, but you are of my Shia. And whatever happens to you, in the East or in the West, we feel it. You're sick, we're sick. You're hurt, we're hurt. And so he tells Shawdab to go before him. Shawdab goes before him and he gets martyred and he's killed. Habas becomes enraged. He goes up to Imam al Hussein and he says to Imam al Hussein, that give me permission to go out into the battlefield. When Abbas enters the battlefield and he is bleeding, they look towards him and they say, look who has come. This is the son of Shabib al-Shakiri. This person is the lion of lions. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. This person is the lion of lions. And so... They say, he says to them, who will come and fight me? Who will come and fight me? They all refuse to come and fight. So you know what Abbas does? 
Because Abbas wants to attain martyrdom. And already he's got wounds from going down and punishing the enemy. And they know that they can't defeat him. Abbas takes off his arm. According to Sheikh Abbas al-Qum in Nafs al-Mahmoom, he takes a tradition where he takes off his armor and he throws his armor. Some say for the hub of Imam al-Hussein, but these ones say no. He took it off because he said to them, now come and fight me. I have no armor. And even then they refused to fight him. So he charged the enemy. He went into battle and he killed as many of the enemy as he could. They couldn't fight him. So Umar ibn Sa'ad called out and he says, stand back. You guys can't take this person. You know who this person is. You know who his background is. Throw stones on him. And so they begin to stone him and throw stones on him until he falls off his horse and then they all run towards him. Now Abbas was one, wasn't one of the companions that had the, the grace of Imam al-Hussein come over him at his dying moment. But Abbas showed his purity of faith and he wasn't someone that, that trained for his purity of faith other than through prayers, lecturing and remembrance of the Ahlul Bayt. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of our holy Imam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure our sick and to have mercy on our dead. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين. رحم الله من قرأ سورة المبارك الفاتحة وأهدى ثوابها إلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات. تسلك الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد.